Party of China seeks national rejuvenation by following a path of Chinese characteristics to full modernization. I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn. I've followed China and its ruling party for decades. As the CPC's 20th National Congress approaches, I see the achievements, changes, and challenges. Join me on the party's road to leading China. Zhengguan Sun Number One Park is a cutting-edge tech hub focusing on core technologies. The zone has hosted more than 100 innovative high-tech enterprises. For example, Pony.ai, an autonomous driving enterprise. We hope to make the world's value of such a high-tech technology. 啊，使之真正能够走入寻常百姓家。中关村的企业家的精神就是鼓励创新、跨领失败。要有企业家精神，敢冒风险，还要坚守科学家精神，为时求真。This is China's first commercialization pilot zone of unmanned travel service. A driverless taxi is transporting passengers. This robo taxi is operated by Pony.ai, which is among the first licensed enterprises to operate within the 60 square kilometers area. 就是要去理解周遭的意图，我们该怎么做啊？这种认知角度上的智能，对于整个人工智能领域也是一个新的挑战。像无人驾驶技术，这就是人工智能领域里面能够称得上皇冠上明珠的这样的一个存在。它真正意义上是把很多很高精尖的这个问题集中合为一体。As of August 2022, China has over 5,600 autonomous driving-related enterprises, and over a dozen Chinese cities have allowed robo-taxi operations in designated areas. 随着我们示范运营的嗯这个规模逐步扩大，能够更多的数据能够被政府和监管方能够获取，在基于这些数据之上，能够建立起一个合适的一个门槛以及监管的一些细则。其实很难想象这个政策的支持会走得如此之快。Besides the macro policy environment, the micro ecosystem is also important for knowledge sharing among technology and innovative companies. In September 2019, Pony.ai settled in Zhongwen Sun's Number One Park, a high-tech development zone focusing on core technologies. The zone has hosted more than 100 innovative high-tech enterprises. 我们运营公司、运营方和园区里的企业的关系，一开始我们理解成我们给他们提供服务。那后来的话呢，随着我们跟他的互动的深入之后，我们发现我们的角色其实是跟园区里的企业共生共长。作为我们这个高精尖的这些嗯独角兽企业，呃和这个新兴企业、龙头企业都聚焦于啊中关村一号，彰显了这个园区以及中关村以及海淀区对于我们这边的企业的这些扶持。提供了一个良好的营商环境。Organizing mutual visits among entrepreneurs, inviting financial institutions for sharing sessions, and playing a complementary role in connecting enterprises with government, the park is a cooperation platform for its companies. 不同的发展阶段的企业，或者不同的个性化的企业，它都有自己的呃个性化的一些问题。那么对于这些需求，是政府是无法去呃一对一的去能够扶持得到的。所以我们其实我们既是一个补充的角色，就是一个补充给园区的企业提供一个更好的一个支撑的这样一个角色。那么除此之外的话呢，我们说的我们呃是政府和园区企业的一个桥梁的角色，我们也会去跟呃政府去汇报和沟通，争取让。呃，政府能够，它的政策能够快速的适应这些企业的发展变化的一些需求。The synergy between enterprises and government is galvanized with the help of the industrial high-tech zone. From an electronic sales street in the 1980s to today's world-class high-tech zone, entrepreneurship is in the blood of generations of tech innovators, startup entrepreneurs, and industrial operators. 所有的这个难关、困难、困苦，都会变成我们在创业路上获取的一笔宝贵的财富，变成我们真正去解决问题的能力
，它才能够产生社会的价值。中关村的企业家的精神就是鼓励创新、宽容、失败。就是创新，它一定是在一个非常宽松的环境下，同时也是有一颗非常坚韧的这样一个呃精神在里面。China's high tech zones reflect the country's national strategy for innovation. As 2022 began, there were 230 state-level science and technology industrial parks, among which the Zhongguansun Science Park is the most famous. These parks contribute more than 10% of the country's GDP. High-tech zone is, is very important for China、uh, innovation system design. So we try to、uh, promote our science technology development zone to be a national wide. So then we gradually moving our innovation cluster to Yangtze Delta River zone and to the Guangdong, Hong Kong, and Macau zone. In China, there's more and more innovation clusters all around the country. For enterprises, high-tech zones offer a relatively good environment for innovation with intensive information. They can draw many new opportunities from it. Second, it is about talents. High-tech zones pool all kinds of talents. Third, as a high-tech zone, Zhongguansun enjoys a high level of opening up and is closely linked with many overseas organizations. Lastly, I think it is closely linked with the capital market. This is the Shanghai Zhangjiang Science City. In the past 10 years, more than 10 major scientific installations, such as the Shanghai Light Source and the National Protein Science Research Facility, have been launched. Researchers develop special innovations to construct an electron beam that is the current international leader with highest brightness and lowest energy dispersion. In the past 10 years, China's investment in basic research has increased every year. In 2021, it was 3.4 times that of 2012. China's unprecedented emphasis on basic research has accelerated the development of large scientific installations. The expenditure of basic research over total R&D、uh, by the end of the five-year plan will reach about eight percent. And now, one of the faster example in global in the world. Basic research should be considered from three aspects: first, basic science; second, technical science; and third, engineering science. To build an innovative country and serve as a leader in science and technology, I think it is important to enhance research capabilities and levels at these three aspects of basic research, namely basic science, technical science, and engineering science. China's ranking in the Global Innovation Index has risen from 34th place in 2012 to 12th place in 2021. China's high-speed railways and 5G networks lead the world, and breakthroughs have been made in manned spaceflight and Mars exploration. China's new energy vehicles and new display industries rank first in the world. Innovation is profoundly changing China. But it does not mean that there are no challenges ahead. We are seeing a shift from a catching-up national innovation system to a leading one. To upgrade our national innovation system, we need to ramp up our strategic sci-tech power with national laboratories as the core. We have a future science city. Uh, we have also、uh, large national laboratories、uh, to promote、uh, science center and technology innovation heights, both together. Two centers at one height. This is very important. China's science and technology system reform centers around the most critical factor of talent, and the systems and mechanisms for talent training. Use, evaluation, and incentives are being improved constantly. In those early days, we did not fully grasp the essence of innovative and entrepreneurial activities. That's why the services we provided were rather superficial. In fact, the talents who engage in innovative or entrepreneurial activities require different services at different stages. I agree with you. The, we are still need a lot more,、uh, more and more talent.、Uh, so we still emphasize what's called the people-centered philosophy of development, the same as the principle in innovation area. 
So I believe we are still pay more attention to the educational reform to, to transfer, to cultivate our young students to be more innovative, more entrepreneurial. President Xi pointed out that market vitality comes from the people, especially from entrepreneurs and from entrepreneurship. In the past decade, the party's appreciation of the role of entrepreneurs has been raised to a new level with unprecedented attention and institutional guarantees. Economic driving force is from uh, entrepreneurial behavior, especially the entrepreneur is uh, one of the main uh, driving force for innovation. But in the current stage, we still emphasize uh, what we call the new entrepreneurship that uh, not only focus on the business side, but also for uh, their skills in science technology and also their strong social uh, responsibilities. The most critical element of entrepreneurship, from my perspective, is the audacity to take risks. I always believe that what entrepreneurs do must go beyond their current conditions. Making breakthroughs undoubtedly entail many risks. So we need to nurture scientists with entrepreneurship who dare to brave risks and failures. Yeah, we are trying to transform our, our national culture to be conservative to entrepreneurial work. We have get various channels to get the government loans to set up the companies. Scientists should nurture a spirit of entrepreneurship and dare to take risks while staying committed to the scientific spirit, seeking truth from facts, and being ready to devote themselves to the country with a selfless spirit. We need to foster a common value in our society and combine these two aspects. Innovation and entrepreneurship are two foundational pillars of China's long-range plan to realize the country's great rejuvenation. Innovation is the first of the five new development concepts, President Xi Jinping's top-level economic guidelines. It is the first time that innovation has held China's top spot, innovation in science and technology certainly, but also in services, management, processes, branding, and marketing. China's national goal is to be in the front ranks of innovative countries by 2035 and a global scientific power by 2050. China is progressing, for example. The number of patents filed by Chinese entities now leads the world, though quality, while improving, still lags. But now, in light of disrupting international tensions, led by U.S. sanctions and pressures to decouple, China has a laser focus on self-reliance, especially indigenous innovation in science and technology. President Xi has prioritized pursuing high-level independence in scientific innovation. Core technologies, artificial intelligence and machine learning, integrated circuit design and manufacturing, semiconductor chips, quantum computing, life sciences and biotechnology, and new materials, Technological applications target the digital economy, 5G, intelligent manufacturing, healthcare, alternative energy and new energy vehicles, and space and sea sciences, among others. Chinese experts cite three ways how China can build science and technology, independence and self-reliance. First, increase basic research. Currently, China's basic research accounts for about 6% of its total R&D budget, far lower than the 18% in the U.S. and 25% in France. Second, upgrade intelligent industry, transitioning from following to parallel running or even to leading in some high-tech fields. Third, prepare for deglobalization and uncoupling in science and technology. Indigenous innovation must alleviate bottlenecks and make up for shortcomings, especially in semiconductor chips. There are challenges. When government allocates huge funds, resources can be misallocated, causing inefficiencies, waste, distraction, disappointment, even corruption, as in China's semiconductor sector. In response, the government is tightening peer review procedures and engaging the private sector. 
The importance of entrepreneurship in China is highlighted by five numbers. Private business accounts for 50% of fiscal revenues, 60% of GDP and investment, 70% of industrial upgrades and innovation, 80% of jobs, and 90% of enterprises. Entrepreneurship and innovation combine in top-performing small and medium-sized companies that have special products or know-how in strategic sectors. Bottom line, China's industrial policy is pioneering novel relationships between private business, entrepreneurs, and government to accelerate innovation. The results will play out over 5 to 15 years and become obvious. With the vigorous development of local e-commerce, a young man from Gansu, after graduating college, decided to return home to start his own business. He followed a local influencer to learn live streaming skills and became a millionaire in the village. During this year's fruit and vegetable harvest, he gets daily online orders as high as in the thousands, and he leads more villagers on the road to prosperity. It's a kind of national strategy. It's not only for the countryside construction, it's for the whole country's stability. Minjin County is surrounded by deserts. On this infertile land, local people, especially the educated young, tended to migrate to cities. Wei Zhe was one of those who pursued the urban lifestyle. But things didn't work out at the beginning. So he asked Zhang Peng, one of his friends and a local e-commerce influencer, for help. Minchin County has made good use of its ample sunlight to develop greenhouse farming. Within two years, poor villages among its 248 villages have all been lifted out of poverty. Today, besides cantaloupe, fennel, fruits and vegetables, ginseng, tomatoes and mutton are leading local products. With the improvement of the local ecology, agriculture, logistics and infrastructure, a trend toward reverse migration to the countryside has begun. Happiness is a state of well-being and contentment. For Wei Zhe, it is good to make money and earn respect. Being home to help his parents and more villagers means even more. Minchin County 
我就想的是，在未来这几年，就是能帮助我们附近乡亲们多卖一些农产品，再就是他们业余的时间可以争取一些费用。China is a big agricultural country, which is why rural development is a top priority. From 2012, when China decided to build a moderately prosperous society in all respects, to 2021, when China announced reaching this goal, the growth of the countryside has played a critical role. Since reform and opening up in 1978, rural areas have encountered a new problem. Most young labor forces have migrated to work in cities. It's a kind of national strategy. It's not only for the countryside construction, it's for the whole country's stability. Especially China is uh, the biggest physical production country, so we need to turn to the surplus industrial capacity into a new field, that is a rural construction. To promote rural growth, China first launched five focuses for countryside development to enhance villages' living standards. So the central governments use the budget bonds to lead large amount of the bank funds, invest into the so-called infrastructure construction in countryside. In 2013, China began a new round of rural reforms, encouraging all villages to promote the joint stock cooperative system of local collective property rights. Today, rural lands belong to the collective ownership of farmers, which is the basic principle of rural reforms and the key factor in countryside development. And this new collective economy has taken root in over half a million villages across the country. So that is uh, the game in China, and the village committee can change the position into the social enterprise, and then they maintain, they keep these uh, properties as a semi-public, down to the households, they are shareholders, but they have the income, not have the rights to sell and buy these uh, facilities. So it means that different level have different uh, benefits, have a different ownership, that is a very complicated structure. In recent years in rural China, the tourism industry has boomed, with innumerable homestay restaurants, native specialties, souvenirs, and cultural products. But repetitive products, disorderly development of lands, and poor quality new businesses are not uncommon. How to fix these problems has become the focus of Chinese rural experts. So we said one county one policy, or oh, one village, one business. So nowadays we are very much emphasize the county level, township level, and the village level, three levels project need to combine together for how to make the whole county as a whole to utilize the natural resources and then maintain the sustainability. China stresses that the only way to revitalize the countryside is to cultivate ecological civilization with the goal of achieving common prosperity, China's main developmental theme for the next three decades. Common prosperity is the core of our development philosophy. It is not simply an economic issue, but also a political one, which involves the foundation of governance by the party. President Xi Jinping rightly celebrates the success of China's targeted poverty alleviation campaign, which by the end of 2020 had brought about 100 million of the intractably poor out of extreme poverty. For China to achieve the Chinese dream of national rejuvenation, eliminating extreme poverty was necessary, but it was not sufficient. China must continue to reduce still substantial relative poverty and close the still excessive wealth gap, primarily between rural and urban areas. 
Rural vitalization exemplifies China's long-range vision to the years 2035 and 2050, when China's goal is to become a fully modernized socialist nation, when standards of living in rural areas should be roughly equal to those in urban areas. By 2035, achieve basic modernization of agriculture with rural areas having roughly equal access to public services. By 2050, rural areas having robust agriculture, beautiful landscapes, and prosperous farmers. It is a grand vision, but a tall order. Without the vitalization of the countryside, there can be no social stability, no common prosperity, no national rejuvenation. While grand visions are formulated by central leadership, they must be implemented at the local grassroots level. And this is especially true of rural vitalization. Overarching principles to achieve rural vitalization are strengthen the party's leadership over agriculture, rural areas, and farmers, and safeguard national food security and safety. Specific guidelines include stabilize supply of key agricultural products, reasonably guarantee the income of farmers, promote research on key agricultural core technologies such as seed sources, and provide preferential tax and fee policies. Moreover, improve rural governance, plan rural social organizations, build grassroots cadre teams, provide dispute resolution mechanisms, and bolster the village-level collective economy. The party exhorts grassroots officials to go into the fields and farmhouses to listen to the voices of the masses and to understand their needs. Rural vitalization is a core component of President Xi's political philosophy of common prosperity. Common prosperity is aspirational, a China that is more equal, where disparities in standards of living, wealth, and opportunities, especially between urban and rural areas, are reduced substantially. President Xi's vision is clear. Encourage the dynamism and innovation of private business to create incremental wealth, while at the same time, utilize appropriate powers of government to bring about fair and equitable allocations of that wealth and thus achieve both full modernization and common prosperity. As China looks to the future and to realizing its great rejuvenation, the driving forces will be, on the one hand, innovation and entrepreneurship, and on the other, rural vitalization and common prosperity. The combination makes China's development special. The world is watching.